I'm working in the New Perspectives Microsoft Access 2010 textbook. I'm picking up on page AC91 in Tutorial 2. There are four video segments that precede this one that take you through the first part of the chapter. What we'll be doing now is creating referential integrity. The concepts that we're looking at here work in any situation when you're trying to create relationships between tables and establish referential integrity. We just happen to be using the Belmont database as our sample that is the sample database in the New Perspectives Access 2010 textbook. So I'm going to start by going to Database Tools, opening up the Relationship window. Since I've not been in the Relationship window before, the Show Table dialog box opens. I can add the table from this view or I can add them from a different view. Since the book walks through using the show table dialog box I'm going to show another way. So I'm going to go ahead and close these. Now the rule with database design is that the primary table goes to the left. So our first table is customers. Customers have contracts and contracts are invoiced. And so we would create the relationships in that matter. One to many and then one to many. It's just sort of a standard design concept with the one table being the one to the left. Now as we get into more advanced databases you're going to see that this this doesn't work in every case but just to kind of get you used to this idea. Now what we need to do is we need to establish a relationship between the primary key field in one table to the common or the linking or the foreign key field in another table. Because one is a primary key and one is a foreign key, it really doesn't matter which direction you drag and drop. I can drag and drop this way and it's going to show the customer table related to the contract table or I can do it the other way and it's still going to show the customer table related to the contract table through the customer ID field. Down at the bottom I see relationship type one to many. This means that one of the fields is a primary key field. Now if I click cancel and let's just take a look at um, relating two fields that should not be related but just see the difference by looking at um, say we'll do company and contract type. Down here it says indeterminate. What this really means is that one of those fields is not a primary key. In order to establish referential integrity, one of the fields involved in the relationship needs to be a primary key. So I'll click cancel on that again and I do customer ID to customer ID. And now I'm going to try to enforce referential integrity by clicking enforce referential integrity. We want to cascade update related fields. What this means is if I find that I've keyed in my customer ID incorrectly, if I change it, it will cascade through the entire database. We tend to not to check cascade delete related records. If you were to delete a customer, it would delete all the customer's contracts and all of the invoices for that particular customer. Now you need to think about what you're trying to do here. Are you really trying to delete a customer or are you trying to delete a, an instance of an invoice or the instance of a contract? And so by leaving cascade delete related records unchecked, you can't make the mistake easily of deleting a customer and all of the records that are related to that customer. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. Now what this is telling me oh, is that I have data in the contract table and it will normally, what Access will tell you is that you have a problem on the many side of the relationship. Now you have to understand that your, your problem could also be on the one side of the relationship, but Access assumes that your one side is correct and your many side is incorrect. So it's telling me that I have data on the contract table that violates referential integrity rules. So it's telling me that I have a contract that does not have a related customer. I'm going to just say OK on this 
and click cancel and I'm going to come back to it. First I'm going to see if I can establish the relationship between contract and invoice. If that's working then I know I'll just have to go back and work on this one area. If I have a problem here too then I really mess things up. So I'm going to drag contract num to contract num. I want to make sure it says contract to invoice, contract num to contract num, one to many, enforce referential integrity, cascade update, related records, and do not cascade delete, create. This one works. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this and if it asks me to save I'm going to say save because just because one of them didn't work doesn't mean I can't save this. Now I'm going to have to figure out what the problem is. Now the problem will normally be in records, since we're working through a textbook, the problem will normally exist in records that you keyed in yourself. So we'll start with the contract table and all we need to worry about are those data values that are in the customer ID field. And I'm going to go, this would be in tutorial one where we created these and on page AC19 I have 11001 which is correct, 11027 is correct, 11005 is correct, 11012, 05, 040, 43, 70, 83, 38. I keyed the customer ID number incorrectly in the contract table. So now I'm going to have to go look at the customer table and see if I keyed in the customer information correctly. Now this information that you keyed in is on page AC88 in your textbook. The first one should be 11001. I don't see a 11001 with sam with a sample student, but I do see a 11011. Looks like I messed that one up. So I'm going to change that. <laughs> Since it's a data change, I don't need to save the table. I'll go back into database tools, I'll reopen my relationship window, and I'm going to try it again and see if I can get it to work this time. There we go. And so now in this segment, or in this series, we have created three tables, added data to three tables, created referential integrity between among um, three tables. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. And the last thing I'm going to do is make sure that I compact and repair my database. And this should be good to go. That's the end of this segment for tutorial two in the New Perspectives Microsoft Access 2010 textbook for tutorial 2.